All right, I am back to do, I think this is episode 17. I'm gonna do scenario 16 of Jaws of the Lion. I still have to do a city event from the end of the last scenario. So I think we'll take care of that first before I go through anything that might have changed with the characters. I did go through and change their decks up a little bit. Um, I took out some of the extra movement cards that I added for the last scenario because it's only this little room this time, so not a whole lot of movement needed, it looks like. All right, so let's take uh, this city event here. All right, so this one says, you're minding your own business in the Sleeping Lion when a rough-looking Inox sea captain rushes up to your table. I've been told you're the folks to talk to if you have a problem, she says. A number of goods have gone missing from my ship at the old docks. I tracked the thieves to an abandoned warehouse, but I have reason to believe they may, there may be more than I can handle. You look up at the huge Inox one more time and then scratch your head. Could be a lucrative opportunity, so long as you don't get killed. Option A, demand payment up front. Option B, accept the job proposal. We had one very similar to this before, but that was like a caravan, I think. I did not demand payment up front then. I think we'll just stick with consistency, not demand payment and accept the job proposal. So option B. Let's see. The Inox breathes a sigh of relief, then a smile cracks across her face. Good to know, I can count on you, she says. We outcasts have to stick together, right? You're about to argue with her assessment of you when she produces some extra coin as thanks. Gain five collective gold and a new location, misplaced goods. Scenario 20. All right, so a new scenario. I'm gonna grab my little campaign sheet just so I can mark this. I got this, I don't know if I've shown this before on the stream but it's like a campaign tracker. I got this on BGG. So I'm gonna mark on here that scenario 20 is now open and that I have done city event 17. So I might do that one next, just again to mix it up from the story. See if there's some, maybe there's an interesting treasure chest in that scenario or something. All right, so that's our city event. Oh, I need five, mark five collective gold also. Mark it here, I'll give it to Crowley. He always seems to be lower on the coin, coin gathering, which is kind of funny because I think in the book it said that he was like melee and loot. Maybe he took, maybe there were some cards I didn't take from the levels that were looting cards for him. Okay, so anyways, um, I have one too many small items here uh, for the scenario. I plan on setting up shield spike. I think I'll keep the steel ring and maybe not take ring of haste this time. I'll just put it behind the card. I also spent quite a bit of gold. I bought volatile bomb. Let me put that over there. He's got a big ranged attack that we got um, to the last time he leveled up. He's got this flying sickle. So I intend to use the bomb in conjunction with this flying sickle because um, what the bomb does is it turns your ranged attack into an area of effect attack for three targets. And this flying sickle is attack five at range four. Uh, so I can get three attack five offs if I get three monsters lined up. How that uh, bomb pattern is set up. So I think that's a good combination. Even though there's lots of ranged attacks on this side, I think it uh, with that big, big one that he's got will work out pretty good. And then on this side, this both of these were new items that opened up after the last scenario. 
I got bladed armor uh, for Killian over here. Even though he's not usually within melee range of enemies, he had studded leather before. Studded leather, I had to decide to use before cards came out of the monster modifier deck. And it would put him at a disadvantage, which I like, and gave him shield one. Here, the bladed armor, I can elect to use it when he's about to get damaged, so I can see what card comes out of the modifier deck. It's going to give him shield two, and then it's going to uh, do two damage back to the monster that attacked him. So I kind of like this a little bit better than studded leather for him. So I sold the studded leather and spent some of his gold to get the bladed armor. I think that is it for in-between scenario items. So let's look at scenario 16. Let's take a peek at the map here. Um, so scenario 16, mixed results, is kind of above scenario 6. We're back at the university again. Um, so putting this sticker, actually taking this picture and getting this ready to show on the stream showed me that I am terrible at putting stickers on apparently because the corrupted word there did not line up very well. I do kind of like how, you know, so to get to scenario 16, you would have had to have done scenario 6 already. So they kind of included a check mark because that part of that sticker went over that part of um, sticker 6. So they put their own little check mark on the sticker to show that scenario 6 has been done. So anyways, that's where we're at as far as in relation to the map of Gloomhaven. I'll read the intro. The goal here for scenario 16 is kill all enemies. You burst into Professor Haltrip's office, holding a vial of the black liquid. The old quattro looks understandably alarmed, but you waste no time in explaining the situation quickly and calmly to him until a determined look settles on his face. Once again, it was up to me to save the city, huh? He asks, standing up from his cluttered desk. And we don't have the luxury of time. I think we can throw together some tests, but it won't be easy or pretty. We'll need to inject a number of specimens with variations of this toxin and observe how they deal with different stimuli. With enough data, we should be able to formulate a concoction that will arrest the transformation. He exits his office and leads you down the hallway to his lab. The stimuli will be where you come in. I found your last for foray in my lab to be very helpful in expediting the data collection, so I'll need something similar here. It will be more controlled, of course, but we need to collect as much data as we can, as quickly as we can, so we'll be dealing with large groups of specimens at once. Haltrip passes the black vial along to a new assistant, then directs you into a small laboratory. After you enter, he closes and locks the door from the other side. Not to worry, the test will be over before you know it. Let's begin with the first phase. So he kind of just locked us in a room with what is going to be a bunch of monsters to fight, it sounds like. I did actually read the first, I read this the other, I think it was yesterday in the special rules last night. I did not go um, into where there are the story points. Um, so I saw there was Black Imps, Blood Imps, Rat Monstrosities as the enemies needed, but no enemies set out on the board. We also have no money tokens, no traps, or no, also no um, treasure tokens, treasure chest tokens. So special rules. It says, at the start of the second round, spawn the following. Rat Monstrosities based on the number of characters. So for two characters, it says one elite at each C. So we've got a C here and here. So we're going to get an elite here and here. And a normal at each B. We've got one, two, three, four Bs to deal with. Then at the start of the round after all these spawned enemies have been killed, read story point number one. So rat monstrosities, the elite ones get advantage. And then both of them on death, all adjacent figures will suffer two damage. So they're going to come out at the start of round two. So I've kind of got a round to set up and to maybe move into 
position to start on attacking them at the beginning of round two. So let's shuffle battle goals. I think I just finished shuffling all the other decks. Both of the characters are one check mark away from another perk. And I don't know, we're still, one of the characters is 29 points away from leveling and the other one is 34, no, 44 points away from, I'm sorry, it's 29 and 34 points away from leveling. So, is that right? Maybe I can't math in my head. They're still a ways from leveling. In order to get another perk is why I was mentioning that. But if I can get a battle goal for each of them this time, then they will uh, be able to do some more stuff in their decks. All right, let's see what we got on this side first. Agoraphobia, agoraphobia, and each of your turns adjacent to a wall or obstacle. I've had that one before. Uh, that might not be that difficult. There are quite a few obstacles here in this scenario. Plebeian, never kill an elite monster or boss. That's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So we'll try to remember to end our movement. I'm going to put it right there in the middle, just so it's just not out of sight, out of mind. And yes, I made sure that my card camera was working this time. Conservator, never lose a card to negate suffering damage. Ooh, gambler, kill a monster with an attack that has disadvantage. You know, kill a monster with an attack that has disadvantage. Never lose a card to negate suffering damage. Maybe gambler. That one doesn't seem as easy as Crowley's. Boy, that card fell back behind there. I don't know if I want to attempt the never lose a card to negate suffering damage. Do I have enough healing to make that a thing? I'll try to kill somebody with a disadvantage. Someone who's maybe got one hit point left or something. All right, so I think the first turn will be kind of easy. I'm just going to set up shield spikes over here. And I want him, there's going to be an elite down here. One, two, three, four. Uh, maybe not strangling chain yet. I don't know if sand devil's good to come out just now because I'm already setting up one card. So I think I'll move five. So his turn's gonna be pretty simple. Just get down here, stay next to this obstacle for his uh, battle goal. On this side, I'll set up my new favorite, to or yeah, my new favorite. And where do I want to move to? Let's see. I want to try to, I'm thinking about like trying to kill these elites first. So one, two, three, I'll need to get there. Move three, I just need to move two. Maybe these guys don't have poison or anything, so I don't think I'm going to need care package right now. So maybe I'll um, do the bottom of care package. So this is a very simple turn. Uh, I'm going to get the XP for setting up the favorite token. And then I'll just move two to right there. Just getting ready for these guys to spawn 
next turn. Setting up shield spikes, getting the XP. One, two. And we will move one, two, three, four. Well, hang on, let me think for a second before I finish this. Am I gonna wanna do melee or... I think I'm gonna stop there. So I might want to do this Radiant Sickle. It's an attack four at range two, but then that'll also make this guy suffer two damage and I might be able to stay away. So I think I'll stop there. Just so that I'm not right next to the guy back there that I might be attacking. And I'm still ending my turn next to obstacles. Okay, so we're at the start of round two. Got two elite rad monstrosities there and there. Probably do it like this because these guys, these standees are kind of small. I don't know if that actually helps for you guys to see them like that. Maybe when there's more than one type of monster out there, it will. Okay, so we'll go around counterclockwise like this on the ones that fall out. That guy there, there, well, they landed where they wanted to land. So we got Sandy 1, 3, 2, and 6. And then 4 and 5 are the elites. All right, so. I'm not going to use the shield on here. I might even actually use the bottom of Barbaric Instincts, attack this guy to go at 12, and then the top of Radiant Sickle to attack the elite guy in the back. Or do I do something to get a shield? Because I've got shield spikes on the bottom. I don't really need to move. I'd really like to attack or to, to take them out from a distance because of that suffering damage when they explode but it is nice to get them to explode next to each other do a little bit of damage um, so the bottom of flying sickle actually has two attacks on it it's super slow though Mm, twirling Stabs actually attacks all adjacent enemies, but if there's light out there, it gets an extra attack. Maybe I save that for next turn. Let's do the bottom of Barbaric Instincts and the top of um, Radiant Sickle to attack that guy in the back. And hopefully he is... not going super early and will still be far away from me. All right, we're gonna to toss our new favorite token probably at the elite guy. Maybe do we ricochet? Wish I had some more attacks on the bottom on this side. That one needs to be adjacent to get it done. Um, I don't really want to walk right up and do close cuts. We've got less hit points on this side for Killian. Um, let's see, one, two, three. So this is actually kind of interesting. I, disorienting Barrage, there was a comment that was made in an, on one of my other videos that made me think more about how to use Eagle Eye Goggles. Eagle Eye Goggles gives you advantage on the entire attack action. So I added Disorienting Barrage back into my deck because this is one attack action and it can target three three enemies. And this will give me advantage on all three of those attacks. So yes, it's an attack one, um, but that can probably translate into a, a two or three damage because I'll have advantage on, on every single one of those attacks that I flip out of there. 
And then if I use my favorite token on the elite guy as well, this could be a good start. So that's a top at 51, which is kind of slow. I doubt I'll take him out. So maybe I'll save quick turnaround for next turn to be able to loot my favorite token back. I don't really think I need to do anything on the bottom of any of these. I don't want to set up another card either. Seems a little too early when I've got, I can see I've got two story points to get through. Um, and this thing said here, let's begin with the first phase. So this might be kind of a longer scenario. Uh, too bad I wasn't right up next to someone for that bottom of close cuts. Uh, let's... Pushing someone probably does nothing for me. So what's a card that I'm okay with probably not using right now? Probably the top of second wind is not needed till later. So I'll just use this as a, as a bottom basic movement throw away card probably not even actually going to be moving okay so we've got 18 so we've got 12 and 18 so we've got Crowley first then Killian let's see what the rats are going to do they're going at 52 they're going to move plus zero and attack plus one if this attack is performed the monstrosity suffers one damage their movement is uh, two for both of them Maybe I do back up, just so I'm not getting attacked. I could back up too. I think I'd, that would put me out of range from attacks on this side. We'll see how it works out. All right. I think I'll do Radiant Sickle first. Top of Radiant Sickle, so attack four at range two on the elite guy back here. Anything I want to use special? No, I'm going to save my bomb for when there might be a bigger cluster of guys. So attack four at range two. Plus one is five on standee number four. Where's the five? There it is. And the target adjacent to him will suffer one damage. So that's standee number one. And light. Not available till next turn though. So I could basic move. No, but I've got shields. Oh, I don't have any shields though. One, two, do I take a step back or do I attack and wound this guy and then just take the damage? I mean, I could chain armor to get a shield and then heater shield. So they'll be suffering at least one from my shield because of shield spikes and he would be wounded. I don't know what's better to just not take the attack. Take, not taking the attack seems better. I'm going to do basic movement for the bottom of Barbaric Instincts then. Uh, go one, two, stay next to the obstacle. He'll move up here. This guy will still come at me. Because the elite will stop there. So I'll still face one, but I won't be facing the attack from the Elite, who's going to have advantage. All right. I don't know if that was a good idea, but we'll see. Um, it's possible. Let's see. He has five hit points left. Attack one. I don't think I would have been able to do four damage. 
I might have been able to do three damage, and then he would have been wounded. And then he would have died. I still don't know if I'm sold on this. I think I am happier not taking the attack at advantage. I think so. We'll see if I'm actually happier at the end of this scenario. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do disorienting barrage first, using our eagle eye goggles to make it advantage on all three attacks. So we're at range three. Um, I'm just gonna go. I'll go this way, counterclockwise. So starting here, we start at attack one. Am I gonna do anything else with this? During your attack, add plus one attack to the entire attack action. Might as well. Okay. Because that's going to give me three plus ones, basically. So we're starting out at a base of attack two. At an advantage on this guy here is plus two and muddle. So that's five on standing number two. And he's... No, there's no such thing as double muddle, but he's double muddled because the, he's going to get muddled from this and disorienting barrage is also going to muddle him. Now let's go to the elite. We'll throw my favorite token at him. So uh, that makes it we're at a base of five because of the power potion. And we're at an advantage because of eagle eye goggles. Five plus three makes it eight, and that's standing number five. Plus, because of my favorite token, he gets wounded. And I could push him one, which I might as well do. Now standing number six. We're at a base of two with advantage. Got the null and the zero. Good thing I had advantage. Um, so we just use the base of two because of the plus zero. All right, I think that was a pretty successful attack. Now, I've got the bottom of second wind. I just don't want to take any attacks. I can go one, two back like that. In two rounds, this guy's gonna just die on his own because he's wounded. So I think this is a decent start. I didn't kill anybody, so I won't get that extra XP if I change to do the move three instead of the basic movement. So pretty close though. Oh, and actually, Even though it's not going to make a difference because they won't get within range, muddle, and muddle. But just to make sure that everything is getting tracked correctly. If I ever have a game where I'm actually tracking absolutely everything correctly, I will be amazed. <laughs> Looks like there's an upside down card in there. And there is. Yeah, and there's, did I not flip them over? They're all upside down. That's what happens, I guess, when you're looking around and trying to talk when you should be paying attention to what you're doing. All right, so only this guy has no damage on him.
Now it's their turn. So we start with the elite guys. Um, they have a base movement of two. So he's going to go one, two. This guy is going to go one, two. Um, now the regular stands. Standing number one will go one, two, and then is going to attack Crowley. Don't think I'm going to shield up, and I didn't get any shields from either of these things, right? So he's a base attack of three, but it's attack plus one. So that's an attack of four. Wow, plus two is six. Hmm. I don't know if I use it this early. How much damage does he have on him? He has one damage on him. This might be a little too early, but I'm gonna use my steel ring for shield four and my heater shield for shield five. So that means I end up taking one damage going from 20 to 19 then with shield spikes having shield five five damage goes back to the rat monstrosity so he dies drop a money token and then he also explodes so being next to him i suffer two damage so no shields or anything stops that so that takes me to 17 also throws two damage back on to standing number four, taking him to seven. I hope that was a good idea. Okay, so now we go standing number two, one, two. Standing number three, one, two. And standing number six, one, two. that it they have a reshuffle he also would have suffered one damage because he attacked me I just realized that I'm gonna backtrack a little bit I'm not gonna use this shield the only reason I used the shield was to get exactly enough damage for him to die so I will take another damage going to 16 I forgot that that card said if they had did the attack that they would suffer one damage. So he suffers that damage as well. So he's still dead, but I didn't need to use my shield in order to kill him with shield spikes. I don't like doing take backs too often. I've done them, I don't know, a couple of times during the, uh, the playthroughs. But there's so much going on. Sometimes if I remember something like that and it's not gonna change any the outcomes, I don't really mind actually adjusting what I did when I can achieve the same outcome and set me up to have this for available for use again all right what do we want to do this round oh uh, on their turn he should have suffered a damage from his wound all of these muddles would go away Come on, there we go. So one more turn and he's just gonna die. So if I can get rid of this elite back here before he even gets an attack, then he won't be able to use his advantage. And he has seven damage already on him. So do I have another range? I've got an attack two, range two for two targets. It's slightly risky because that's not quite enough damage to pull it out. Um, there is light. Okay, so this might be a little risky, but I'm going to take a step forward and use twirling stabs because it targets all adjacent enemies and with the light it makes it an attack three.
Could also use the bottom of flying sickle. The bottom, the first attack would get would not get used. But then using the light, I could step forward, use this attack, targeting this guy. This is kind of slow, going at 38. Or do I save it to use the top of Flying Sickle to get, in a, a, get a big attack 5? Um, I kind of like them having disadvantage against me because they do hit kind of hard. Or should I move forward and have shield because I have shield spike on? Um, I think I'll move forward with shield and get a shield and do the attack three. Try to take that elite guy out. Save one of my ranged attacks so I'm not right next to them when they blow up. Moving forward, I will still end up next to an obstacle for my battle goal. Now on this side, don't need to worry about him, so what can we do with these two guys? Two has five out of six, so he's almost dead. Thetty number six has two damage out of six, so he's not almost dead. I could take, let's see, if I take him out, he will make him suffer two more damage, so maybe Ricochet. Ricochet seems brilliant. And then hopefully, let's see. No, the rat monstrosity will not be dead yet, so I need to save quick turnaround for next turn. So what is my other card? Maybe I just pick something to go hopefully fairly quickly. So they're not right up next to me. Close cuts. He's going to die on that spot. So that's an okay spot for me to be able to go to loot my favorite token on the next turn. Let's see, do I want to keep sent? Maybe do I want to keep close cuts? Maybe play it for the XP. Yeah, but I don't want to be meleeing these guys because they explode, and it's not pleasant when they do. I do need to be right up next to somebody when I do a ranged attack, though, to get my battle goal taken care of. It's actually, well, there's going to be imps that don't. I'm assuming there's going to be imps because they're available. Are there things that are up there for the scenario? Maybe I'll just wait till I'm right up next to an imp that's almost dead. All right, so we've got 16, 25. What do we get over here? 52. It's the exact same card, which I don't want to see because it makes their attacks attack four as a base. Hmm. Okay, so Crowley's first. I'm going to take the step forward. I know it's not till the end of the turn, but I'm going to forget if I don't take it. Still next to the obstacles, so I have shield. So let's just put this down here for shield reminder. Now the top of twirling staffs is attack two. I'll use the light to make it attack three. Let's get the XP before I forget. Takes me to three. And we'll start drawing. We'll go same direction. So on the elite, bummer, he's still alive. <laughs> 
still alive. And I can't do anything about that. Right? I don't think there is. I can I don't think I can do anything about it. Okay, this guy over here. Attack three. Plus one is four. Um I'm gonna have shield one, so he is actually going to die when he attacks me. But I want to try to mitigate as much damage as possible, so... This guy has two hit points left. I'm gonna be... I'm gonna take a lot of damage this turn. Holy cow. Yeah, I'm gonna chain armor. Because their attacks are gonna be... Um, uh, starting at a base of attack four. So right now I'm sitting at a shield two. Plus when they explode, I'll I'll take the damage from them exploding. Yes. We might be using our heal four card next turn if they're both dead. All right, now this side over here. Oh, not only for my shield spikes, but their their own attack is going to make them suffer another damage but i want the shield to mitigate whatever is going to pop out from this with their attack okay ricochet starting here on standing number two yeah so we're at a base of attack two plus two okay so standing number two that's number three standing number two dies he drops a coin. Adjacent, standing number six, takes two damage. Up to four. Now we'll go back here for the ricochet. We're at a base of two, plus zero. Still takes him to six, so he also explodes and dies. So he's gone. Now, uh, we'll just do a basic movement. Now let's go one, two, collect up this coin, because we can move over here to get our favorite token with that loot one next time. All right, so that's the end of his turn. So now we go to the monstrosity. So we got elite number four. He's got a base attack of four. Whew, minus two makes it two. We've got shield of two from these. Makes it zero. He would suffer one damage from this, plus suffer two damage from my shield spikes. Um, so standing number four dies. Drops a coin. Explodes. And I suffer two damage from the explosion, down to 14. Now this elite over here has a wound start of his turn, he dies. We'll drop the coin and my favorite token. No one to explode. There. Uh, this actually was not planned well because I'm going to have to read this story point at the end of this round. Yes. Um, not good, I don't think. This guy needed to survive another round, but that's not going to be possible. All right, it's attack plus one, so he's at a base of four. Plus one is five with my two shields. Makes it three damage. Uh, yeah. 
So that takes me down to 11, plus the 2 from his exploding takes me to 9. So what it says here is at the start of the round after all these... Oh, at the start of the round after all these spawned enemies have been killed. Okay. So that is the end of the round. Um, is there any other cleanup? This would have to get shuffled. I'm not sure piling shuffling, piling shuffling, pile shuffling makes that much of a difference when there's only eight cards. Nothing else needs to be shuffled. I don't think so. I do have my Amulet of Life and my Healing Potion, plus my Heal 4 card is still in my deck. So we might be okay. All right, so we're at the start of the round. Let's read story point number one. Haltra bangs on the glass of the window between rooms and gives you a thumbs up. Begin phase two, he yells emphatically. He is much happier than he should be, given the circumstances. Spawn the following rat monstrosities based on the number of characters. Two characters, one elite at D, which is right there, and one normal at each B. So we've got the four normals again. There, 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 and there. When any of these rat monstrosities die, instead of all adjacent figures suffering damage, spawn one blood imp of its same rank in the hex in which it died. Oh, that seems fair. <laughs> so we're gonna end up with a blood imp there and four blood imps there. So at least the normal blood imps only have five hit points. That elite one's gonna have 10. Hmm. Now these rat monstrosities, they just hit so hard. Ah, uh, it's too bad quick turnaround is, it has the attack four on the top also. So it, it says, instead of all adjacent figures suffering damage, so melee is not a bad thing this time. Uh, let me look, so what do we got on this side? I've got the flying sickle. So they have a base movement of two. We've only seen one card out of here, so, so they can move three. One, two, three. I might have to attack or step back. I think I need to heal because I'm only at nine. Two, three. I don't know if they're going to have any ranged attack capabilities, but if I take two steps back to do some healing. Still have Flying Sickle available. Maybe they'll group up to where I can volatile bomb them. I mean, I can maybe I can force them to group up with the elite. And have Killian worry about these two guys over here. So I probably want to use this and then maybe try to go as fast as possible. So 10 and 32 going at 10.
now if I go one, two, Attack two at range four. Attack three. If there was air out there, it could be attack four. So I might save quick turnaround for next turn. We do overwatch and center mass. So the bottom of overwatch for movement, just take a step back. Still be within range to next turn, maybe run up there and grab my favorite token. Got throwing hammer, I've still got bladed armor that I should use probably before resting. I mean, I could always run up, pick up my favorite token. Be a little adventurous. Probably stupid. What is this going to make it? Uh, that would wound him as well. Uh, that should be gone, right? Yeah. He's got six hit points. And I'd be at attack five. With a wound, then maybe bladed armor is not necessary quite yet. We'll see how it goes. This is probably dumb, but it sounds kind of fun to play out. Trying to, trying to get my battle goal. Blade armor might be needed because I could get um, with the disadvantage. I could draw something. Oh, but I need to kill him with the attack. No, I'm not going to do it. Center mass and the center mass for the attack and Overwatch for movement. There's probably going to be a better opportunity to set it up later. All right, so 10, 24, this is correct. Let's see what the rats are gonna do. 34, basic movement, basic attack, and muddle. I don't think that, based on where I'm moving, that they will be able to do any attacking, though. Of course, I could have the muddle be what it gives me disadvantage. All right, anyway, so. Very boring turn, not even gonna put the cards over there. Basic movement, moving back to, and healing four, getting the XP. So let's heal four, takes me from nine to 13, and an XP. I don't see any poison or wound abilities over here so I'm not too worried about needing to heal those off so but maybe I will amulet of life I'm gonna I'm gonna long rest at some point here 
to get my cards back, I think. And maybe this is a good opportunity to do that. While these guys are moving slow before the blood imps come out. Hmm. Might as well just use the healing potion. Three hit points is three hit points, right? And I don't think I'm too worried about, although the black imps do have poison. I'll take the three hit points now. All right, that's the end of Crowley's turn. Let's look at Killian's turn over here. So they're going to move to one, two. If I go back here, just to stay out of reach. I don't think I'm going to be able to set them up in perfect position for Volatile Bomb. So I don't know if I need to move three. So I'll just do um, center mass as attack three at range three on number six over here. Uh, we got three. Wow, plus three. He dies, so instead of, let's see, we need the grab monster, instead of, doesn't say anything about not dropping a coin. Uh, so I think we still drop a coin. But we also have to spawn a, a blood imp. So let me just pick one randomly out of the pile. It's standy seven. Which means we now need to draw an imp initiative card. So 37, it's gonna do a ranged attack. At range three. And he will move three. So he's gonna move a lot and still take a poke at me with his ranged attack. Uh, basic movement, I'm gonna step back to like that. One, two, three. I'm out of range right now, but if he moves up here, I want him to go there so I can move down there and take my favorite token, toss it at him. Um, who's next? The Rat Monstrosity is at 34. So we need to do the Elite Guy first. They want to do a... Um, melee attack. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So Killian's actually his focus, so he'll just step forward like that towards him. Then these standees, one, two, that's standing number two, one, two, one, two. Now the Blood Imp will go here to get within range three for his attack. It's attack base of two plus zero. Interesting, bladed armor says when damaged by an attack, gain shield two for the attack and the attacker suffers two damage. It doesn't say that it has to be melee. Hmm. Okay, so anyways, he's at a base of two plus zero. I mean, I don't see why I just don't use it. Because then when I long, eventually when I long rest, 
it will I'm muddled um, it'll come back so I might as well use it when I have the chance and it doesn't say that it has to be melee so that's standing number seven on the imp side is going to take two damage from from my armor and I'm my shield blocks the damage so now the question comes do I short rest or not I actually have an interesting idea Too bad they're not set up perfectly where I could hit three guys with the volatile bomb. I'm kind of wondering. Though, if I could get it set up. Do I have any... I do have a push two on this side. See, but taking out a bunch of rat monstrosities at once just creates a bunch of blood imps that then might be able to act. Maybe I save it for when the blood imps come out. He's already got two damage, so I don't really need to use my favorite token on this blood imp. I still think I'm going to run down there, pick it up, and then do the top of follow through on him. Why are these cards here? I should have put them in my discard pile. And perhaps I'll have, I will have disadvantage because I'm next to him. Perhaps I'll get lucky and kill him and that will trigger my battle goal. Um, I think I'm going to try to take out that elite rat monstrosity with flying sickle. Having air is not very is not something I actually need right now. So I'll go, I'm not gonna rest, I'll wait a turn, maybe. Oh, not maybe, I'm gonna have to do some kind of resting after this turn. All right, so we've got 11 and 19. Now let's see what these guys are gonna do. Nothing special, so basic move, so they're only gonna move two. One, two, yeah, so they're not gonna be able to get to me where I'm gonna go run and hide at. This guy will though. Okay, and then this side on the imps. Restoration. If I don't kill him, he's going to heal, but he's not going to be attacking. Okay, so going first on this side. 
Move three. One, two, three. Perform a loot one because my favorite token is adjacent to me. Get all kinds of money and my token back. Um, hmm. I am muddled. So I'm already at a disadvantage. That blood imp is going to heal two, but not attack. I wonder if I try to take out this rat monstrosity and throw my favorite token at it. I'll be at attack five, but muddled. He would get wounded. Hmm. He's got six hit points because they come they come in with such a huge base. They're gonna come in with three attack. Try to take out the blood imp. It's gonna do it, and I'm gonna throw my favorite token at him. It's probably way overkill. Do I or just do I take a chance? Because I'm at attack two. I need to get a plus one, but I'm muddled, and I'm next to him when using a ranged attack. I'm going to throw my favorite token at him. So that takes me to an attack of five, and I got the null, and a plus three. So actually nothing happens. Um, so he's just going to heal himself back up. All right, so, uh, let's see. The rat monstrosity's first. Oh wait, no, it's Crowley's turn. All right. All right, I'm gonna attack five at range four on the elite here. Five plus one with a shield. Makes it six. He is standy number four. And he's got four hit points left. Then I am actually gonna pull him one, two. Uh, maybe just one. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, uh, it doesn't really matter because he, he can't get in range of either of us with only two movement if I pull him one. Yeah. Uh, that's going to create air. Then I'm going to move around this way, staying next to the obstacle and out of range. of anybody's attack movement. That's the end of his turn. Now, we go to the rat monstrosities. So the elite here is one, two, three, one, two, three, equidistance from both. Killing is earlier in the turn order. One, two, not within range to attack. Um, Standing number one is three. Actually, he's going to go this direction also and not be able to get close enough because he's out of movement. Then standing number two will come there. And he has a base attack of three. Minus one is two. Takes me down to 13. Now standing number three is closest over here. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm gonna have him go this direction. That shouldn't be there anymore. I think that's it. So the blood imp 
Um, he, he's not really going to be caring about moving, and he's just going to heal himself. That goes down. This needs to be shuffled. So at least I'm getting these plus threes back in the deck. Now this feels like it's going to be a long one. There's still one, two, three, four more imps to come out. Another story point to read. Because it said, I don't think I read down that far, did I? It said, at the start of the round, after all these spawned enemies have been killed, read story point two. So all of these guys got to become imps. We got to kill all of them. It's a lot of damage that needs to get done. Uh, one thing I did do incorrectly. He has my favorite token on him, so he was actually wounded. So he would have been at three hit points, or three damage, So and he only healed two of it off. I, and I guess I could have pushed him, but probably no reason to push. Um, I'll short rest. I need to get this volatile bomb set up, I think, for right when these guys turn. Uh, how about this one? Barbaric instinct. Sure. It's not my heal and it's not my uh, card that I want to use with a little bomb. This side, there's no way I'm just going to stand there and have a bunch of people lined up. No, well, maybe, maybe not. Because I've got obstacles around me, that kind of makes them funnel in to attack me. It's kind of been a dance so far around these obstacles. And he needs to stand next to them. Uh, how about this one? Care package. Hmm. Oh, I don't like losing that one, but I don't want to lose one of my good attacks. I'm just looking at if any of these black imps come out. They've got that poison. What other heals do I have on this side? Just my big one? I don't even have my big heal in here. Oh, there it is, yeah, just the big one. Plus, I've got my healing potion. I guess with poison, you just don't, don't stand somewhere where you can get attacked, right? So what are we going to do with this situation over here? I should save this for when he drops my loot token. He's wounded. He will eventually bleed out. I'm not muddled, so do I have something? I do have Disorienting Barrage again. But my goggles are currently in the used position. So that rat monstrosity has got four hit points left. Anything else that attacks multiple guys? I guess I have ricochet. What can I do to like run away? I don't want to lose that card. I could move three to move down here. And if these guys don't get any bonus to their movement, maybe be out of range. Moving two probably makes it more likely that I'm out of range for multiple guys. 
because they'd have farther to come around the obstacle this way, or they could just come down the obstacle that way. Close cuts as in a, for attack three. Setting up Overwatch. Do I want to set up another card? It's like getting five attacks. That's an interesting idea. I could use the bottom of close. Oh, this this is probably this is the start of a good idea here, maybe, because I got guys adjacent to me. I can use the bottom of close cuts to get an attack and a move, and then let's ricochet between a couple of guys. How does that sound? I've got 13 hit points still on this side. All right, what do we do over here? I've got my move five, so I could get up into the action. Do I get close enough? Let's see, Radiant Sickle is range two, so if I want to try to take this guy out. Hmm. Attack two targets all adjacent enemies. Oh, there is air. Is there anything that would benefit from air immensely? Probably not enough to make it worth changing my plan, except that Overwatch becomes attack four. That's probably too good to pass up, plus the experience point. So I'll figure out who I'm going to attack with the attack four, maybe the elite guy. Um, Sand Devil. Let's move five, so one, two, three, four. I could get there. There isn't really anything on top. though. I've only got heater shield to add shields to use with my shield spike unless I place something that's going to give me more shielding. Um, This is a good, this is good. So if I do this on the elite guy, maybe he dies. And then adjacent enemies will suffer a damage and I'll get light out on the battlefield. This is really slow though. I highly doubt the battlefield is going to look the same. I can use my boots to move five. So let's get a move four that's quicker. Strangling chain. One, two, three, four, five, get the coin. Yeah. This is better because I want the battlefield to look like this when I actually get my turns, hopefully. So we've got 19, 25. The monstrosities are going at 60, getting even lower movement, but extra attack. And the imps, the imps will go at five with shield five, heal oneself, and they will generate anything of my choosing. 
Well, what do you know? How nice of them. What do I want next turn? Fire, maybe? So it's their turn. They're going first. He would take a damage from the wound, but he's going to heal himself. Um, he's got shield 5, so I'm not attacking him. That's for sure. Uh, what do I generate? I don't need anything this turn, so what do I need next turn? Does fire sound like a good idea? Ooh, light. I'm already getting light, though. Shield of the Desert. Fire and light. All right, we'll generate fire off of their turn. Off of their ability card. Okay. So now it's, it is Crowley's turn. So the monstrosity is going to get extra attack, but fewer movement. He won't be able to get next to me. He won't be able to get next to me. Okay, so we are going to go one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I have to use my boots. Um, so that's the bottom of Strangling Chain. That technically immobilizes standing number one. I, I don't think it's going to make a difference because I, I shouldn't say I don't think. It isn't going to make a difference because he's not moving to do his attack. So then the top of Radiant Sickle is attack four at range two, targeting the elite guy back there. Plus one is five, so he is dead. Uh, let's grab an elite blood imp. And fortunately, he's not going to act this turn because the blood imps already had their turn. Standing number eight. The two guys next to him, standing number one, suffers a damage, and standing number two, suffers one damage and we create light from radiant sickle no xp or anything like that that turn is over all right oh Oh, now I'm torn. Do I want to... I could jump over there and get an attack in on... Get started in on that elite guy with close cuts. No, I'm going to use the air to get the attack four. But I might do that first. Before I move away. One, two, three, four. I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh no, he's got shield five. There's no way I'm attacking him. What am I talking about? So we'll do the let's do the bottom of close cuts. It's attack two on this guy here. Times two is four. So close. Takes him to five. So close. Now move two. I'm going to go one, two. Now I think I will do Overwatch is attack. I'm going to use the air to make it attack four. I've got five range, plus I'm going to get an XP for using the air. Taking me to three. One, two, three, four on standing number one. It's attack four. If I don't draw any negatives, I'm okay. All right. Takes him out. We'll drop a coin. Now we need to drop a normal 
blood imp and again they're not he's not going to get to act because they've already gone is i think the way that rule works all right that worked out I'm glad I moved here anyways because I completely forgot about this. I had, was initially thinking about moving there and that would have totally blown my battle goal, but I ended up next to an obstacle. Okay, rat monstrosities. Standing number two will take a step towards me because their move is minus one and he will take a step towards me to get closer. I think that's it. We got to shuffle over here because we pulled the times two. That stuff goes down. Don't think it's going to work out to where it's like so perfect that I can get, oops, three guys that are already blood imps together. Think about using my volatile bomb. Just try to burn this elite blood imp down. I've got 16 hit points. Oh, I forgot to get this coin. However, however, with fire and air out there, I probably should use Shield of the Desert, the top part, which means I'd take a couple of steps around, end up next to the obstacle, and then I can push them away from me. And then Maybe I'll use this card. I can use move two. That'll give me at least one shield for shield spikes because I believe I'll be taking quite a few hits next turn. I'd rather have them suffer the damage because I also have the card that I could move and then they'd have disadvantage against me. Is that what I want or do I want them to suffer damage? from shield spikes. That's my heal, so I better not. I will move two, that is two low initiative cards that I'm using. What about this side? Ricochet, or quick turnaround. I want to keep that to get my potentially get my favorite token back. I don't have oh this one will be extra damage on him because he is my favorite token. He's only got five hit points though. I'm not sure I should even as long as if he doesn't get a whole lot more heals. Although both of the cards I think I've drawn for the imps so far have had heal on them. It is an XP because he has my favorite token. Maybe if he dies, I can run up there and grab it. But that means I have to commit to using quick turnaround now, which probably is not a good idea. Standing number two on the rat monstrosities has one hit point left. Oh, I don't want to toss this card though. So maybe ricochet just to get rid of him. And also damage standing number seven. Then what am I using? Maybe I walk up there with center mass and push that rat monstrosity back too.
going at 24. Actually, I wonder though, he's only got one hit point left. I'm wondering if I should take this opportunity to try to have him be the guy that I get my battle goal on, assuming that I even am successful in in defeating this particular scenario. I still want to do Ricochet. What happened to Ricochet? But that's so late, 56. Maybe the bottom of second wind. Oh no, I need to move first though. So what's a card that I want to get rid of? I don't have my Eagle Eye Goggles, so Disorienting Barrage is... Ah, oh, but it's so slow. I need something quick. I'll just go back to center mass and ricochet, going at 24. All right, so let's see what they're gonna do. The imps. Oh, I hate that card. Going at 24, and the monstrosity is going at 74. Move plus zero, monstrosity suffers one damage. Attack plus one, target all adjacent enemies. So, I'm actually going to have the imps go before me, I think, because right now I'm out of range. On this side, anyway, of being muddled. And I'll be out of range over here once I do my... Oh, no, I was going to do this melee attack. But he's going to go first anyway, so I'll be muddled next turn. All right, so going over here first. Move two, one, two. Setting this up. So now I have shield one. I'm going to use the fire and the light to make this an area of effect attack and make it an attack of four and get the XP so from four to five same method we'll start here so we're at attack four plus one and we're gonna create fire and light again so that's five on standy um, number four but that would be they he's a normal guy they only have five hit points so he's just dead drop that now the elite he doesn't have any damage on him yet okay so that is standy number eight we're at a base of four plus two is six, he's got 10 total. Hit points. All right. Do I wanna push him? Maybe I do, maybe I wanna ricochet against him. He's got four hit points left. Ricochet is only attack of two. I can't push him far enough away so that he doesn't muddle me. So... I don't think I actually care where he is. 
It's too bad that rat monstrosity is going to be able to get close enough to me to attack. They've got so many dang, so much um, base attack. So we've got shield one right now. Do I want either of these cards back with my stamina potion? I don't think so. So I'm going to have the imps go next. Oh, no, I, I just saw something. Yep, I am going to push him. I'm going to push him here. I don't want him to strengthen that guy. Yep. Okay, so, but standing number two will get strengthened because he's within range two of this imp strengthening him. Um, but he's almost dead, so I'm, I'm fine with that. But then he also is going to muddle me for next turn. He will take a wound on his turn. I'm out of range to be muddled. He's already strengthened. End of Imp's turn. No movement, no attack, nothing like that. So far, these guys have not been that scary, the Imp's. Now, I shouldn't have said that out loud because that means that things are probably going to get ridiculous. Um, so what I'm going to do... I'll take a step forward here. And I don't want to push him. Because I want to be disadvantaged. So I will start here to be disadvantaged, hopefully getting my battle goal by taking him out, because he's only got one hit point left. So moving over to the top of Ricochet, I'm at a base attack of two, plus zero, makes it two. So he dies, my battle goal is complete because I was at a disadvantage. Drop him off. Um, we've got another normal blood imp coming in there. Uh, we need a coin where he died. Now ricochet, I'll ricochet it back over here. On the elite, I think. Or do I want to try for my favorite token to be dropped? If I get three damage, I want my favorite token to be dropped. So I'm going to go over here instead. Still within the range. Um, no longer disadvantaged. We're at a base of two. I need a plus one. And I got plus two plus air. So he's dead. We'll drop the coin. And he drops my favorite token. and air. Yep. Rat Monstrosity's turn. He's going to move plus zero, so he has a move of two. So we're going to go one, two. He suffers a damage from moving. That is standy three. All right. And I'm falling behind on all of this stuff. This guy's been gone for a while. Because he's the only rat monstrosity left. Now he's at attack plus one, targeting all adjacent enemies. He would not have been able to get anywhere close to being able to attack both of us, so that's the spot where he's going to move to. So he's going to attack base of four. I've got one shield. So we're at four, plus one is five. One shield here makes it four. We'll use this shield here to make it uh, three and two damage going back to him. So he's at three. So I take three, right? Base of four, five. 
Two shields, yes. So from 16 down to 13. Into the round, that's gone. All three of these go down. Do I have anything else? Nothing came out that needs to get shuffled. I muddled next turn. The guy that got strengthened... He was out of range to get strengthened. They would have strengthened themselves is something that I forgot. So eight is currently strengthened. The other one who went is now gone, so I don't need to worry about him. So maybe I start over here um, because move three with loot one seems good. I can end up there. Then all three of these guys would be within range. One would be at a disadvantage, though. I could move three, and then all three of them would be within range for Disorienting Barrage. Seems like the setup for that side. Now over here, I have to remember to stay next to obstacles. With... Man, I could, I could hop into that spot and twirling stabs and just attack all three of them. Using light at an attack three. That seems too good to pass up. Hopefully I don't get that stupid shield five card. Is that already out here? Oh, it's already out here. Good. So that's in a that's a top card. Standing number three. Hmm. I think I'm gonna take a bunch of damage though. The imps are not that high on the damage front. They start at a base of two. Thinking about maybe using the light instead. I might get lucky with this attack too and be able to take that rat monstrosity out so that it then becomes the blood imp that I can start wailing on with this twirling stabs. I think I'll try it. Could be a bad move. I got my heal four for next turn. As I, if I don't take a couple of these guys out, I might get wailed on. That's a possibility. And moving here, I'll still be next to obstacles. So I should be good as far as my battle goal goes. I'll take a drink. So 11.38. There's one rat monstrosity left. Going at 9, any time a figure attacks the monstrosity this round, that figure suffers 2 damage. That's nice of them. And on the imp side, uh, 42... Heal two. So the rat monstrosity is going to go first. He's not actually going to move anywhere because he's already adjacent to me. So his turn is just over. So. I hope I kill him on the first time, or it's going to be kind of a bummer. Oh, I'm muddled. This is not a good round to be doing all this attacking. There's only one null in there, though, so just one of these attacks will get nullified. Hmm. 
I hate to waste having the air, I mean the light out there. Oh well. Live when you learn. Pay attention to your conditions, right? All right, we're going to stop. start with the bottom of Flying Sickle. So attack two on the Rat Monstrosity. I'll just suffer the two damage. This really sucks. Going down to 11. And I got to draw two cards, and it's the Null. At least it's out of the way. Move two using the Light to get there. Um, and an XP, so that takes it to six. This is going to end up being four damage from attacking this stupid guy. I'm going to do it though. I want to. I want to get rid of him. I want him to turn into the Blood Imp. So drawing two because I'm at a disadvantage. They're both plus one. The wound's not going to matter. Um, it's three damage. So he's dead. I suffer two down to nine. He dies, drops a coin. Now we need another normal blood imp. So we've got standee number nine. Spawns where he died. So that's the bottom of Flying Sickle. Now we do the top of Twirling Stabs. We're still disadvantaged though. All right, so it's attack two, and we'll go around the horn, starting at number nine, plus one, uh, makes it attack three. So we'll do three damage on number nine. Yeah, and then they're, they're going to heal. Both of those are coming out from that. Now the elite guy is standing number eight at a disadvantage. Attack two plus one is three. So that takes him to nine. Hopefully Killian's attack will take him out. Now standing number four, I've only got one card. Hmm. Minus one. So that's attack one. Does I guess this counts if this card is not, sh if the reshuffle card is not showing at the end of the round, I'm assuming that this counts as the reshuffle. I don't know. If anyone knows that rule, how that's supposed to be handled, drop that down in the comments. So minus one and plus one, so it's one damage on standee number four. And that muddle did some work against me. Um, and I get an XP for using Twirling Stabs. I've been saying Twirling Sands again. I remember at the very beginning when I was reading the card, I said Twirling Slabs because it, I could not see that cross on the T. Before my turn is over, do I want to use Amulet of Life to get one hit point back? I don't think so, because they're not going to be attacking me. I wouldn't have taken any damage this turn except for this stupid explosive blisters. That sounds gross. All right. Did I do that in the right order? I did not do this in the right order. He was supposed to go first. It's too late now. Uh, let's see. That actually might have changed things because I wouldn't have drawn that null. That rat monstrosity would have been dead already. I wouldn't have suffered as much damage. Ugh. Screwed that up. The bottom of quick turnaround, move three. One, two, three. I can loot one because my favorite token is right there. 
Now we're going to do the top of disorienting barrage. Target three, range three. The muddle, I'm not going to worry about putting it on them because it's just going to go off. It would just come off of them now because they haven't had their turn yet. So we'll just go around the horn, starting with number nine here. It's attack one plus two and gets air out there again. So that actually is going to take care of him because they only have five hit points. So he's gone and he will drop a coin. Look at all of this money just piling up. Now the elite has one hit point left. We're at attack one, wouldn't you know it, times two. He's gone. Times two would have been good on the next guy. But maybe it's good he's gonna live for a round so we can maybe do a long rest and just take some damage from him or something. Um, and the next guy, we're at attack one. Plus one is two, so he's at three. Okay, I think that is the end of his turn. Now this guy uh, is just going to want to heal two, so he's back to one. Let's shuffle his deck. I'll worry about the rat monstrosity deck when and if more rat monstrosities come out. Let's move all this stuff down. Having that stuff out there right now is probably not going to make that much of a difference. This deck needs to get shuffled. I believe I'm going to take this opportunity while there's only one enemy out there that does not seem that dangerous to just stand still and long rest. Oh no, shoot. I got to use healing sands on this side. So maybe I'll long rest next turn with him. So on this side, I'm going to go at 32, do this heal, and maybe move over and pick up some coins. Oh, wait, I can't. I can move up and pick up one coin, because I'd be away from an obstacle or a wall if I stopped to pick up these coins. Oh, wait, I can move five. One, two, three, four. I could, I could run way over here and pick up that coin. Okay, probably gets me in a good spot to long rest next turn of being away from this guy. What do we got on this side? He's got one hit point. Um, if I'm setting up, I can move three, one, two, three, end up there on those coins. Is it dangerous? I could draw a really good card and then actually kill him if I try to attack him, so that might not be the best idea. I have not taken a whole lot of damage, so it does not make sense to use Second Wind for healing. So that'll just be like a throwaway turn, but I'll move over there using my winged shoes and pick up some coins. I don't want to get, you know, lucky and actually kill this guy and move on to the next story. I'm for sure that stuff's going to spawn when we move on to the next story point. I don't want that to happen yet. All right, making sure I've got the order correct. 18, 32. What is the imp going to do? Shield 5 and heal oneself and create something. That's fine. I'm not even attacking you this turn. Stand there and shield yourself all you want. And he's going to go first. Don't need the rat monstrosities right now. 
All right, so he heals himself back up. Um, I don't think it matters what gets generated. Just in case there's something weird on one of their cards, I'm going to generate Frost. Because I don't need anything, and I'm long resting next turn, so it's all going to be gone. All right, simple and quick on this side. Going to use my shoes to move three, jump over the obstacle, end up there, and pick up these coins. This is a lot of coins. And then I'm not doing the attack, so turn over. Then going on this side, healing four and moving five. One, two, three, four, five. Heal four with an XP. That takes me to eight. Eight on this side and only three on this side. So that's nine up to 13. Might as well use the Amulet of Life to make it 14. Okay, all that stuff gone. That down. Nothing needs to get shuffled. Next turn is also very simple. Long resting both over here and see what the imp's gonna wanna do. Okay, now he's finally gonna be a jerk. He wants to attack at range three, two targets with a move plus zero and he has a base move of three. So he's gonna get right here and attack both of us. Right? One, two, three. I'll get right here and attack both of us. And curse both of us. It's attack minus one, so it's a base of only one. And we'll get some curses in our deck. We'll start over here. Base of one plus zero is one damage. Thirteen. Over here, base of one minus one is zero damage but we got to get some curses take care of those in a minute so we're long resting gotta get rid of a card all of this stuff comes back from the long rest and we get two hit points from the long rest so we're actually netting one so from 13 to 15 on that side, 13 to the max of 15 on this side. So what card do I lose? Do I lose Sand Devil? It's two XP though. I'm gonna keep this for using with Volatile Bomb, which I'm gonna, it's gonna go off going to make it go off this time. I want to keep this. This is good if I get surrounded because of my shield spikes. A bunch of guys attacking me will just take some damage. Radiant Sickle is pretty good. Swift Strength is also a shield. Twirling Stabs. Hmm. Maybe I don't care about the XP. The move five is really good though. But I've got so much ranged attack in my deck right now. Maybe swift strength. Or strangling chain. There isn't really a big bad to hit with strangling chain. I don't think there's no boss or anything. Might not be the best. They all seem so good though. Follow through, seems like a good target. Disorienting Barrage, now that I've got my goggles back, I can put some hurting on some guys. Don't want to lose that. Second win, just in case I get hit a bunch. Center mass is an okay one to lose, but it's an attack three, range three. This is attack two at range four. I'll just lose follow through. And I get my winged shoes, my blade armor, and my goggles back. What did I do with that curse? Putting you in the middle. Before I shuffle. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-
frost goes away. That frost or ice, I'm not really sure what it's called. All right, so. So the special rules say at the start of the round after all these spawned enemies have been killed. Hmm. Then you read two. I do need to do five damage to him. Oh, shoot. He attacked both of us. So actually, that's okay. We What I was saying shoot about is he should have muddled both of us, but we went after him. So after our turn, muddle would have gone away. That's That's okay. That worked out okay. So we're not going to get to story point two until after we go again. Maybe I take this turn to get Sand Devil out then as a top card. I've got 15 hit points. Maybe Healing Sands will make another turn around if I try to have Crowley be the guy who gets attacked. Make it attack, if he's going to attack, make him attack me at a disadvantage. I don't want to use a whole bunch of cards. Might be able to take him out. Oh wait, but I'm going to use Sand Devil on the top. So I got to do something on the bottom. Um... I don't want to use my shield yet. Yeah. We'll see. Now on this side. Let's just maybe do center mass as an attack three. And then let's use something to take a step forward. Pick up some more coins. We're like so rich right now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, 21 gold just in those coins on that side. I've only got two or three on that side though. Um, oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna set up Overwatch. I'm gonna set up Overwatch. Hope I take him out. This would be. We're gonna do five damage to him. Am I am I doing any damage on this side? Actually, I'm not. Hmm. I'll still do it. Overwatch seems good if there's gonna be more enemies spawning and and moving around. It's like five free attacks having it set up. Okay, 24, 32, what is he gonna do? He's gonna go at 42. He's gonna wanna attack and attack both of us and poison. Hmm. Earlier when I said these guys were not that bad, now they're becoming less than ideal. So we're gonna set up Overwatch, where are my baggies with the little tokens? Over here in the box. Is he gonna move? He would only move if he needed to get... Oh, but if I'm, I'm gonna put Crowley right next to him, so he actually is gonna move. This might work out okay. If I can get enough damage on him, Overwatch being set up could be just the card that I need. Okay, then we were going to do the top of center mass. It's attack three, at range three, plus two is five, he's dead. All right.
Now on this side, setting up the sand devil. I'm going to bring him out right here. Then I'm going to move three. To here. And that's the end of my turn. Imps are all dead. Nothing came out that needed to get, sh oh yeah, this came out that needs to get shuffled. Say so if there's more imps, I will shuffle that. Let's put that in the middle. We are at the end of the round. Nothing needs to move there. Start of the next round after all the spawned enemies are dead. We go on to story point two. On to phase three, Hall Trip yells. We got a lot of good data on the last one, so with any luck, this next test will conclude the study. Special rules. Spawn the following rat monstrosities based on the number of characters. So with two characters, one elite at D. Okay, one elite at D. And one normal at each B and C. I don't know if I have enough normals on stands yet because we need one, two, three, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've only got four. So I need to make two more. Where are my rat monstrosities? Here we go. So there's going to be seven out there. I've only got six spots. I'm going to need to switch. Let me keep reading this. If any figure dies or becomes exhausted due to the damage suffered when any of these rat monstrosities die, spawn one elite black imp in the hex in which that figure died or became exhausted. Elite black imp? Okay, so we don't need the blood imps anymore. There's not enough spaces on this. Um, damage thing for the number of standees I'll have out there. So these guys are back to when they explode, they're going to damage the guys around them. Okay, so these two need to be made into normals. Okay. So we'll go around, it's at every B and C. So one there, one there, one there, 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 and there. All right. This goes at range four. So if I wanted to use my volatile bomb, I know it only hit two of them, but I want to use it. Maybe they'll group up. I keep thinking that it's just going to get, that it's just going to get better, the, the setup. So maybe not yet. I want these guys to be hopefully not next to each other when they're exploding. I don't want to create a whole bunch of amps. Attack four at range two, creating light maybe on this guy. And then what? Take a step back. That's initiative 79. I might do that and use my radiant or use my stamina potion to get Shield of Desert back into my hand.
I don't know. So like like what I'm going through right now is figuring out how do you I think the object or the strategy behind this section you do not want a whole bunch more enemies created, right? All right, on this side, we've got disorienting barrage, and I've got my goggles back. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's the top of the card. And maybe we use second wind just to get some good initiative going for 18. I need to shuffle the rat monstrosity deck. So we're going at 10 and 18. Oh, the blood imps are gone. I do have curses in my deck. Maybe I'll get rid of it with the eagle eye goggles now because I'm going to be drawing six cards out of here. What are they going to do? Nothing special. So they're just going to move two. Okay. Going at 39, so they'll be last. All right, on this side. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Sand Devil on this side over here. I'll step into here. He would be muddled and he's going to suffer one damage and I'm going to move him back into the corner. Just to split some people up. So standing number one suffers a damage and a muddle that's not going to matter. I mean I could move through two of them to damage two of them but I think it's more important to split them up at this point. You know what, man, my movement's not going to be enough to get away from this guy at least. That's okay. So that's the start of my turn using my Sand Devil. Now Radiant Sickle is attack 4 at range 2. I'm going to go on this elite rat monstrosity here. Okay, so it's attack four, plus one is five. That's standee number five. Creating light, standees six and eight suffer one damage. Six and eight suffer one. Now I'm gonna do the basic, hmm. I wonder, so standing number five, he's got five hit points left. I might actually just use Shield of the Desert now. He's going to take a step forward and swing at me. I'm going to do it. So I'm going to use Shield of the Desert for Shield 3, create fire and light, get an experience point. So we've got Shield of the Desert active. I'm also going to use Chain Armor so that I'm sitting at 4 shields so I don't forget, which I probably will, I will do that. 
All right, now this side. Disorienting barrage, eagle eye goggles. So we're at an advantage. And I may even actually use it. I'll start here with the elite guy. So at an advantage. The better card is the plus one. Curse goes away. Um, so that's a um, two damage on five. Takes him to seven. So he will die when he comes up and attacks me. That he's not going to be adjacent to anybody else, so he's not going to explode on anybody. Yeah, I think this, using the shield with the shield spikes, this might work out very, very fortunate for this particular mission. And he's muddled, by the way. Because of disorienting barrage. All right, now let's go to standy six. Take a swing at this guy with advantage. Um, plus one with the wound, so that's two. Takes him to three. And a wound. Now I'll shoot over here at this guy, standing number one. With advantage is plus two in muddle, plus three. Um, so that makes it four. On standing number one. Seems like a pretty good turn. And I'm going to take a step this direction using the bottom of second wind. Then I will be out of range for people attacking me. Nope, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a step this direction and pick up the coin. I'm going to let Stanny 1 come up and attack me while no one's next to him. Use my blade armor and that'll be the last two damage to get rid of him. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now we go to the rat monstrosity turn. We start with the elite guy. He's going to take a step forward. I'm actually going to try to do this strategically to get more coins for Crowley. I'm going to have him take a step forward. Oh, nope, because then he's going to explode onto that guy. And that actually wouldn't kill him, though, right? Because it says, if any figure dies or becomes exhausted, due to the damage suffered when any of these rat monstrosities die. Spawn one elite black imp in the hex in which that figure died or became exhausted. So him exploding for two damage will not actually take this guy out because he's only got one point of damage on him and it will help to possibly kill him from the shields too. Okay, so his rat monstrosity five is gonna step there. He's going to attack me. He is muddled as well as standy six and standy one. Standy six is muddled. Standy one is also muddled. That was from Disorienting Barrage over here, the three guys I targeted. Okay, so he draws, I'm glad he's muddled because it's plus one. So he's a base of three, plus one. I have four shields. Block all the shields. Shield spikes does four damage back to him, which is enough for him to die. So he dies and drops a coin. Standing number eight is adjacent to him and will suffer two damage. That takes him to three damage. This is going to work out perfectly, I think. Well, decently. There's still a lot of guys on the peripheral out here. We gotta remember to shuffle that. Now we go to the normal standees. We've got standing number one over here. Base movement of two. Oh, shoot, the rat monstrosity has advantage. That would negate the muddle. I don't know what order I drew those in. 
do not know what order I drew those in. So because of that, I'm, I'm going to take the times two. So that would be six. I have four shields. I'll take the two damage. I'll just take that as a penalty for not paying attention. Um, they don't do any sort of conditioning to me, though. Yeah. Okay, standing number one is going to take two steps forward. He has a base movement of two. His attack base of three. Uh, but he is disadvantaged. So we draw two. They're both minus one. So that takes it to two. I'm going to use my blade armor, which gives me shield two. So there's no damage coming through. Plus I do two damage back. There's another thing that I forgot. When that round monstrosity blew up, he is going to suffer two damage from that. Yeah. Takes him to 11. So that's not good to have a bunch of guys exploding around me. Hmm. Well, I gotta go back to this. So he explodes, which is gonna be two damage on this side from 15 to 13. I'm probably gonna take six more damage and be down to five on this side. Hmm. Standee number two is here. He's not going to explode though. So he'll take two steps forward. Then he's going to attack. He is not at a disadvantage or anything. So we just draw one. It's plus zero. So he starts at a base of three. I have four shields. So that would block all the damage. Then he's gonna take four damage back. And he's not going to explode. So he's sitting at four damage. Now standing number three, we'll just take two steps forward. His model would go away. Standing number four, two steps forward, not close enough to attack. Standy six is the next one. He's wounded, so he will take a wound. He will take two steps forward. He's muddled, so he's at a disadvantage. No. Uh, shield spike damage back. Takes him out. I'm gonna take that back. I'm, like I said earlier, I wanted to try to stack coins up next to this obstacle. So he would have gone one, two. Drop the coin on that spot. Oh yeah, and then his explosion damage makes five here. He's dead. Two ex explosion damage on me takes me down to nine. Um, Stanny eight would be next. Take a step forward. He is not a disadvantage, so we just draw one. Shields block all of it. Shield spikes um, would take him up to like nine damage. So he would die and drop a coin. Two more splash damage to me. So from nine down to seven. So what's interesting about this is it's any figure. So even if a player character died from this um, splash damage, you would uh, yourself turn into a black imp. Kind of interesting. Okay. That 
I think was a good turn, it was a long turn. We are down to seven hit points on this side. We're still good on this side. I had talked about using my stamina potion, but that was to get this back. And I can't get it back from what it's at now, so. That's gone. Do I rest to get my heal card back? Still haven't used my volatile bomb. I don't think I rest. Standing number two is almost dead. So So we're standing number three, and I've got seven hit points. I could muddle him. I could take. I don't. I don't want to get that close and take a whole bunch of splash damage. So I think I'm going to use the. top of swift strength and target both of those guys and then I'll use are both of those like just completely gone oh no they were created from this so I do have light. Hmm. possible I wonder how this interacts so volatile bomb during your single t oh single target range attack okay If I'm okay with taking maybe one more bit of splash damage. I don't really want this to be the last turn though, because there's so many there I want to get this stack of coins for him. So I'll do the top of swift strength and maybe just do the Bottom of Flying Sickle. No, I want to leave a ranged attack in my hand because I'm going to use my Stamina Potion to get my heal card back so that next turn I have two cards in my hand so I don't actually need to rest. Now on this side, I still have my favorite token, so I want to burn this guy down. Um, so we're going to do a quick turnaround. It's attack four. We'll throw our favorite token at him. We'll make it an attack seven. Um, oh, geez, and I totally forgot about Overwatch. He should have been plunking at all those guys that were moving. Yeah, that's a shame. So that's a big screw up because... I don't think it would have changed any generation of black imps because they were not moving next to each other. But what it's going to impact is him not getting his XP. Right? That's a big screw up. Just so many things going on. So many things to watch. Do the. Oh, you know what? Hmm. 
I can get a lot of coins with this. Maybe I'll do ricochet, even though that it's not really going to do anything. Or I mean, it's going to do something. He'll be wounded for my favorite token. Yeah, I'll do ricochet and move, and I'll move into one of these spots over here and pick up even more coins. He's just going to have so much money when this is over. So he's going to go at 11. I can use my stamina potion to get another card back so he doesn't have to rest either. Okay, now the rat monstrosities, what are they going to do? They're going to go at 60, only move one space, and attack plus one. So who's going first? Killian's going first. We'll do Ricochet, throwing our favorite token at standing number four. Um, so that is attack two at range three, plus three with the favorite token, he explodes. Drop some money. Then I'll do the bottom of quick turnaround. And my favorite token would be there as well. We will go one, two, and then loot one, picking up these three coins. Now, that's the end of his turn. Except, just in case this goes another round, I'm going to use my stamina potion to get second wind back into my hand, and I'll play it for the XP next turn if this continues to go. Can't believe I forgot that. Set it up to do that whole thing. All right, now it's Crowley's turn. What was I gonna do on this side? At the start of his turn, Sand Devil will move up here, uh, makes standing number three suffer another damage. Okay. I was going to use the light. Yeah, so that's what I was going to do. I'm going to attack this guy using the top of Twirling Stabs. We'll get the XP, taking me from 9 to 10. And use the light. So it's an attack 3 because of the light. Plus 1 is attack 4. Uh, so he blows up. Drops a coin. Suffer 2 damage because I'm next to him. So from 7 to five. Now I'm gonna move two. I'll just take one step down, staying next to the obstacle, ending my turn there, picking up three coins. And I have a shield, which I don't even need, so that will go down there. Now stamina potion, just in case I need it, I will take my healing sands card back into my hand. And before my turn is over, I'll use Amulet of Life just for the heck of it to go up to six hit points. All of these enemies on this board, and I can't believe I didn't, I never used Volatile Bomb. I set my whole deck up for that play and then didn't even do it. Okay, so now it is Rat Monstrosity turn. Not going to forget this time. So he's going to take a step because his move is one. He's within five of my overwatch, so it is an attack two plus one um, is three damage, it means he has one hit point left. He's not within range, so yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. Got an even better turn for next turn. I'm not going to worry about shuffling this because they're not even going to have a chance to go. So next turn, he's going at 18. 
Over here, I'm going to go at 32. Rat monstrosity is going to go at 34. So going at 18 on this side, I'm going to heal myself to get the XP. Take me up to my maximum of 15, then 2 XP takes me up to 5. And then he's just not going to do anything for his other card. Then over here, I'm going to move my Sand Devil into this guy, making him suffer a damage, which takes him to 6, and he explodes. And I'll just move my Sand Devil away, because it was here, so I can move it too. Now, for his turn, first we'll do Healing Sands to get the XP and heal 4, so that's up to 10 and 11 XP. Oh, nope, I'm not doing that. Check that. Back to 6 and 4. This was the better move that I was talking about. Because I'm 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'll still end up next to an obstacle. Yep. So I'm not going to do anything for the top of Flying Sickle, so just basic attack does nothing. Bottom of Healing Sands is move 3. I'll use my boots to make it move 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ending up on this hex and looting 2 coins. And getting the battle goal. Each of my turns adjacent to a wall or obstacle. Still adjacent to obstacles there. All right, wow, that was a long one. We're two hours and 40 minutes in. A lot of thinking, I think I think I played it pretty well though. Really concentrate on that last round, not to have any of those imps created from a rat monstrosity blowing up and killing somebody. All right, so we go to scenario 16, the conclusion, mixed results. While the final test, with the final test complete, Haltrip bursts into the lab. You almost turn your weapons on him after what he put you through, but his exuberance is infectious. There it is, he cries, the last strain. That was the key. I've got my assistants working on it now. An agent will be completely neutral an agent that will completely neutralize the toxin's effects. And once it is ready, we will use all the resources the university has at its disposal to distribute the agent across the city. With luck, we will avert this crisis in time. His face bunches up at the edges of his mouth in a smile. He beams with wrinkly pride, and you almost crack a smile yourself before a thunderous boom reverberates through the building. Haltrop's smile disappears. That came from the southeast, he notes. It sounded like a lightning strike, but it's not even raining. You rush outside just in time to see a pillar of red light shoot down from the sky and connect with the old wall gate. Seconds later, another boom echoes across the city. This is undoubtedly the work of Roland and his blood god. What other tricks can they possibly have up their sleeves? There's only one way to find out. So our rewards are 15 experience each, the tower shield, item 29, and a new location, Red Twilight, scenario 17. Let me see if I can grab... Item 29, the tower shield, it says, when damaged by an attack, gain shield 2 for that attack. Oh, we're definitely trading that out for the shield that we have now, because it's just one better. I hope uh, after all this gold, we should have enough gold, even if I have to sell some stuff. Oh, no, we don't have to buy it. We're getting it. Oh, duh. What am I saying? That's where your mind is after two hours and 40 minutes of thinking that hard. Can you carry two shields? They're both uh, they're both one-handed items. Why not? Is that better than my volatile bomb? Hmm. I guess I could give the volatile bomb over here to Killian. He doesn't have that big attack five though. He's got a big. He's got some big range attacks though. Maybe I'll swap the volatile bomb over here because you can switch. You can trade items which I think might be different than Gloomhaven. I think I've seen some stuff on the forums about that. 
Okay, one other quick thing. Oops, bumped the table pretty hard there. Let's do this city event just to get it out of the way. In between scenarios here. How about this one? You're enjoying a lunch of unidentifiable meat purchased from a Quattro Street vendor on a silent bridge when you run across a curious poster. It advertises there will be a large fighting competition in Gloomhaven Square in a matter of days. At first you discount it as something worth your time, as not something worth your time, but perhaps you could be interested if you have something to prove. I don't know why I'm not reading it over here. Option A, sign up for the competition, hatchet required. Option B, ignore the poster and continue enjoying your lunch. Oh, we gotta do it, it's the side quest for the hatchet, right? So it's option A. The hatchet is very eager to join the competition and prove they are the greatest fighter, and so you oblige. It is an individual competition though, so the rest of you will have to cheer from the sidelines. Hmm. That's different. So that opens up scenario 23. All right, so again, this I think this was a long one, but a fun one. I'm sure I missed other things. There was a lot to keep track of, a lot of enemies, a lot of things that I had to fix along the way, plus I totally screwed that up. So again, like normal, if you saw anything uh, else that I missed too terribly, please leave a comment down below. And uh, see you next time. Hope you enjoyed.